Hello everyone, that manga kid here to give a full series review of Again by Mitsuro Kubo. This is a Kodansha release, 12 volumes long, and it is one that I have wanted to read since it was announced that it would be coming here, and I finally got my hands on all of the volumes and read it. Um, it was one that would never go on sale. I only buy during sales and it wouldn't go on sale and then during the sales that it was a part of it was never at a price that I was like uh, do I want to spend this right now and it kept getting put on the back burner even though I was so interested in reading it uh, and as the years kind of went by I just kept putting it off farther and farther and finally I went 2020 is the year I'm gonna collect all of it and I'm going to read it it was so much fun um, I had read Moteki, which is the two omnibus series that came out at the same time, put out by Vertical, by Mitsuro Kubo as well, which I really enjoyed, but it is a very different series from this, and so I was interested to see how uh, Mitsuro Kubo would fare with a high school series uh, that was longer, and yeah, uh, was not disappointed. This was so much fun. I will say I was very disappointed by the first volume only because it was nothing what I expected. Um, I knew what the series was vaguely about and for some reason I just wasn't expecting the characters to have the personalities that they did. And so I was a bit disappointed because I was so put off guard or taken off guard by the characters' personalities that I just was like, whoa, this was not what I signed up for. Um, and I put, I read volume one, I put it down, I waited a couple weeks, and then I picked up volume two when I was in the mood to read it. Um, and then I binge read the entire series in two days from there. So it was not by any means bad. I just was taken aback and thrown for a loop uh, by the characters. So that was me putting my expectations on the series and then being totally sideswiped. Uh, but thankfully, once I had acknowledged and like settled with how the characters behave, and I started with volume two a couple weeks later, totally enjoyed the whole thing. Basically, our main character is Imamura. It is his final day of high school. It's his graduation. He went through high school without making any friends or doing anything. He kind of looks like a thug, uh, even though he's very quiet. Uh, or he spent his high school days being quiet and reserved, but because he looks like a delinquent, people were scared of him and kind of prevented him from making friends or joining clubs or anything. Uh, but on his graduation day, he falls down the stairs along with a female classmate of his. Uh, and they both go back in time to their first day of high school. So he now is reliving high school from day one and it is a chance for him to join the male cheerleading uh, Uendan club which is has a female captain and actually she is the only member of the Uendan and because he always felt like uh, it was something that he kind of wanted to do, but because the club went under shortly after his high school freshman year started because she was the only member and nobody else would join, and so he decides that he's going to revive the Uendan club, and that's going to be his contribution to his redoing of high school. And so, so begins his quest to revive the Uendan uh, with Captain Usami, who is a very um, high, hot-tempered, uh, very strict captain, um, very traditional and loud and funny uh, unintentionally. 
and Imamura himself is a very loud and kind of like spastic uh, character. He's very unpredictable. Every time that I thought I knew where he was going with something, he just went, and then I'm going to dart in this opposite direction and throw you for a loop. Uh, all of these characters are so bizarre, wacky, zany, huge personalities, uh, which was fun. It was a lot of fun, ridiculousness, um, with the underlying, you know, story of regret and redemption, I guess, because he feels like he's getting a chance to kind of redeem himself and be something better than what he was before. Um, time travel is a theme as it doesn't just stay in the past. We see some jumping around of timelines, um, which I did know going into this. So I was interested to see how that plays out. And yeah, it's all very fun, but all, also at the same time nostalgic because as somebody who's been out of high school for many years now, um, you know, there's always that thought of kind of any point in your life, I guess, where you're kind of like, if I could do that again, how would I behave differently? And could I have done something differently to make my experience better or worse? Could I have, you know, interacted with somebody who I only briefly passed by, but maybe that person could have been a big part of my life? Um, all of these kind of themes are explored here and in a way that isn't very uh, traditional to the time traveling narrative, I think, because um, it's not an uncommon theme, time travel, in not just manga, but stories and fiction in general. Uh, but I think that this one does it a bit differently, and it's kind of fun in that way because it doesn't stick to that mold of like, don't alter the world or don't do this. Like, they very much are very. <laughs> um, kind of selfish people who are just like, and I don't mean that in a horrible way, um, just in a kind of matter of fact way that they're like, no, this is my chance. I'm going to take advantage of it. Um, yeah, but it's very interesting and fun and the art is great. Uh, and the characters are so wacky. Like I just wasn't expecting them to be so bizarre and it's, there's a lot of text also. Uh, Mitsuro Kubo has a lot of text in her works. She also has a thing for asshole men or guys. Uh, like a lot of misogyny. Um, and she puts that as a humorous thing, which is fine. Uh, but I know that in Moteki it was very similar that like she seems to have a fondness for creating very um, naive and like ignorant, very ignorant male characters seems to be her thing for some reason. Um, yeah, it's strange to me, but it is what it is. I... There is romance, quite a bit of romance, um, not like with uh, amongst various characters, uh, but it's mostly a comedy drama sort of situation. Uh, yeah, it's very hard to explain, but I, I really, really thoroughly enjoyed my time with this series. I will reread this in the future. I did cry at the end. Um, and I just felt really, really good about this whole thing. It does have distinct arcs. The, uh, first half of the series is one particular arc. The second half is another arc. And then the final couple volumes are, uh, the final kind of situation. But at the beginning, it felt very much like a a sports series 
because it follows Uendan, which is like this very traditional cheerleading. Uh, but then the second half is like, nah, we're not really a sports series, made you look kind of thing. And so it was kind of interesting, the tonal shift that happens, but I think that it kept it interesting and kept it fresh because it kind of was like, no, we're not going to sit in this one kind of mold or genre. It We're just going to go all over the place because we can and I want to and it'll be fun, trust me. Like, it, it was just a lot of fun to read and yeah, but expect ridiculousness. I don't know. I just, I don't know why I thought it wasn't going to be as ridiculous, uh, but it was entirely ridiculous. The art is fantastic. The story itself was great. I highly recommend this. If you've read any, if you've read again and have any recommendations on other series that I should check out, please let me know because I am all for it. I am all for high school shenanigans and ridiculous teenage angst and selfishness and just like big personalities. It was so much fun. Highly recommend it. Thank you for listening to me ramble if you've made it this far.